Good morning. Uh, can you hear me? Good? Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, so it's a rather wrong title, but uh, there's a reason behind this, and uh, it will be evident uh, soon. Uh, if not, I'll just yeah, uh, spell it out for you. Uh, just a show of hands. Uh, who uses React.js? Closure script? Okay, uh, who's seen uh, Norbert's uh, talk just before? Okay, because uh, it tides uh, quite nicely with what uh, he was saying uh, in some parts. So uh, for those of you who haven't seen uh, the talk, uh, I'll explain things for others. Uh, hopefully it will sol solidify uh, what he said and I'll expand in a few bits and show more practical results. Uh, so uh, as I mentioned, I work for Retailic. Uh, it's a company that helps retail to draw business conclusions from uh, custom behavior and develop uh, software. Uh, what it means that on top of building web applications and apps, we also do some data analysis. Previously, I worked for Sky UK. It's a multimedia uh, uh, company uh, in the UK. Uh, it's a big uh, company. Uh, although I worked in two different environments, uh, both of them are similar in a way that it's really important to choose your tools wisely. Uh, because they impact not only your customers, but also you as a developer or uh, projects that you work on. And I believe that uh, React and ClojureScript and uh, the technologies that we use uh, in ClojureScript with React are really good and would help you in a lot of cases to build uh, pre performant websites. Because nowadays, most of the applications are fairly large, partly comes from the fact that uh, we have to solve more and more elaborate problems. Uh, there's lots of uh, browsers uh, and devices ranging from widescreen desktops through tablets uh, to different uh, mobile phones. And whenever we develop, we have to create uh, applications, websites that are performant and mindful of uh, resources. Uh, in 90s, late 90s, we could use uh, just JavaScript to create dynamic content on our websites. But as our application started growing large, uh, we started having problems. So uh, jQuery was invented. Yeah, hope, uh, unfortunately, it wasn't discovered. So it gives you a hint. Uh, it shares us from some browser works and inconsistencies. So we could start building uh, large applications, but it led us to uh, what was called jQuery soup. So we moved to MVC. Uh, different frameworks like Backbone or uh, Knockout. Uh, they give you nice features, but there are trade-offs and they come with their own set of problems. In 2013, Facebook released uh, its own library called React.js and uh, really quick, it gained momentum and attention in the developers' uh, community. Uh, but what does it mean to be reactive? Uh, it is a nice talk, but Eric Myers, what does it mean to be reactive? And if you watch the talk, uh, you'd see that there's a lot of definitions and people have got hard times to agree. And by the way, uh, all the resources that mention uh, that at the end of uh, uh, at the end of slides, and the slides will be available in on the internet, so uh, you can easily uh, check things out. So for our purposes, we can say that uh, components reacting to events and changing uh, and are changing state. So that's my definition of reactive programming uh, in this context. Uh, so let's uh, have a look at an example where we've got a list. It's fairly standard in uh, web applications or websites. Uh, if I want to add a new item, uh, the question is, how can I do this? So the solution number one would be to uh, insert a new item. And this, this is a follow-up question. Where can I do this? Uh, how can I find the right place to insert uh, this new item? Sometimes the order doesn't matter. Sometimes, uh, sometimes it does. Uh, or the solution number two would be to throw out the entire list and rebuild it. But render, ren rendering large scale amounts of DOM is really problematic. Uh, most JavaScript frameworks would uh, help us to mitigate uh, problem number one, either by 
uh, making DOM easier to navigate, uh, or uh, by tying elements to controller that keeps, uh, keeps it up to date. Uh, React.js, on the other hand, solves problem number two. Uh, React uh, provides uh, vir virtual DOM to versions, and whenever you make a change uh, to your component, it will compare uh, the previous version with a new one and only make uh, the smallest amount of work to satisfy the changes and update uh, DOM because pretending to re-render whole page or component is uh, much cheaper than doing whole uh, swap and re-rendering. But for us programmers, it's easier to reason, uh, reason about uh, this uh, change. Uh, React is often described as V in the MVC model and uh, because it provides an interface to uh, changing data and you can use it with different uh, frameworks like Angular and a lot of people have uh, done so successfully. Uh, React uh, uses Flux architecture where we've got uh, one directional data flow. Uh, an action would cause dispatcher to uh, react and update store and manipulating store would cause view to be re-rendered uh, and further uh, interactions with view would cause the yeah, dispatcher to kick in uh, and we will see this pattern really clearly uh, in closure script and its approach to uh, using uh, react but so what's the problem with react well most of the time you you have to use javascript and uh, there's a really hilarious but disturbing uh, screencast by the destroyer of all software uh, about JavaScript and all its quirks. Uh, it's, really, it's really funny. Uh, well, not funny. So to mention uh, a few things with uh, uh, JavaScript, it's, uh, this, what does it mean when uh, its syntax is really verbose, uh, confusing, inconsistent, uh, operator convention, uh, uh, global variables and uh, so on and so forth. So what's the, so we know that JavaScript sucks, but we have to use it. Uh, it's almost everywhere and its runtime is improving. A lot of interesting technologies are coming out that are associated with uh, JavaScript, so it'd be uh, unwise to just let it all go. So what's the solution? The solution would be to build a better language on top of JavaScript. And a lot of people have done so. And one of such languages is uh, Clojure. Unfortunately, Clojure is uh, really difficult, uh, as you can see. Uh, one was too simple, but uh, Clojure is a lisp and uh, yeah, definitely, definitely too difficult for programmers, <laughs> at least for average, but uh, people interested in functional programming are more curious, uh, and that's what it takes. Uh, it takes a lot of curiosity to learn uh, closure script because it's just different unless you are coming from Lisp. Uh, if you are coming from OO or other functional programming languages, uh, the parentheses might scare you, uh, but once you start writing code and seeing, you'll see how simple it is because uh, uh, closure script is a modern Lisp uh, it gives us immutable data structures, uh, clear separation between, between state and identity. identity. Uh, it allows us to do REPL-driven development. Uh, Closure has got a lot of interesting ideas like transducers and also libraries like core.async. So it's like using uh, Go in, uh, Golang in Closure, just a library that Im mimics a uh, language uh, quite uh, mind bogging, I'd say, uh, and a lot of more uh, things. Uh, Closure Script provides uh, JavaScript uh, interop, so you could use uh, React just from uh, your Closure code, but uh, why would you stop and just do that? Uh, uh, React.js or JavaScript is not idiomatic in Closure Script, and we wouldn't be able to leverage immutable data structures. Uh, the, uh, one wrapper has got a page where they compare performance of uh, pure uh, React.js and their wrappers, and because you can use immutable data structures, uh, the code is uh, 
more performant uh, faster. But different wrappers in ClojureScript not only give you, give you more idiomatic uh, way to write uh, React.js code, but also they provide lots of interesting uh, tools that are not either not available in uh, React.js or more difficult to uh, achieve. And one of the wrappers that I'd like to talk about is RAM. Uh, it's not a framework in the sense that uh, it forces you to build applications in certain style and whenever you want to do something that the authors didn't think about, you are battling the framework. Uh, RAM, on the other hand, is more like a library where you pick different things that you want, different components. You can mix them match uh, all depending on your needs. Um, other wrappers that are available in uh, Clojure Script, uh, like OM Reagent or Quiescent, they've got built-in component behavior model. Uh, but RAM provides a two-level API. On a lower level, you define your component and you render it, so it's uh, starting this uh, no uh, behavior. Uh, a simple definition of a component uh, requires a name. You can add some uh, document, uh, string, description, uh, parameters, and uh, obviously your render body. So if I want to define H1 component, a uh, uh, generic one that takes a text, uh, that's all what it is. And uh, if I want to display it on a page, uh, I'll just mount it and pass uh, some text uh, to my uh, component. Uh, it's a simple component, it's not reactive. Uh, it doesn't care how you store your data and how you uh, interact with your uh, component. So it, it's kind of boring. So how can we make it more dynamic and do uh, interesting things? Uh, we would resort to the second level, higher level of RAM's API, where, you can where we can use uh, mixings to control uh, behavior. And there are uh, a few pre-built mixins in uh, RAM, and they mimic the behavior of uh, other uh, wrappers that are available in Clojure Script, like uh, OM, Reagent, uh, Reacl. So uh, if we want to create a component, we'll just extend our definition to include optional mixins, and you can add more than one mixing to your component, uh, all depending on your needs. So one of the first mixing I like to talk about is a static mixing. Uh, it checks if arguments that you pass to your component have changed. So it would uh, avoid re-rendering if arguments are the same. So going back to our H1 uh, uh, component, we declare it as a static, uh, as component using static mixing. And if I mount it first time and, and I pass some important text to the body, it gets mounted to DOM displayed. If I want to pass it uh, again with the same text, re-rendering won't be triggered. And if I pass different text, it will uh, kick in the re-rendering. So as we can see, just by using this static mixing, uh, we can avoid uh, re-rendering components uh, where we don't have to. Another mixing uh, is a local mixing. It provides per component local state. So let's say that we run a company, an uh, IT company, and we've got a website. Uh, on our website, there's a section where customers can uh, click and they can select different services uh, that they would like us to do uh, like web development, testing, integration. And whenever they click on a component, uh, it gets highlighted. So they've got visual cue, what's going on. And plus, uh, the total amount gets uh, updated. So if I wanted to create such a component, I'll define this uh, local uh, mixing. And in this case, I'll be storing a CSS class and I'll provide on click behavior that would just uh, call a function uh, toggle class uh, service in, in this case. 
and this class would take a current or old value and a service and I will be comparing the class so if, if it was an uh, active class I just get rid of a class uh, CSS class if it wasn't I add cl active class so that's why I can uh, create an uh, interactive uh, uh, list uh, another mixing that RUM provides for us uh, is a reactive mixing. It creates uh, truly reactive uh, components that track uh, references to uh, data. Uh, and this mixing would uh, auto-update whenever the value stored uh, changes. And this mixing works like reagent wrapper. So going back to our uh, service uh, uh, example, whenever a customer clicks uh, and to the service, the total amount gets updated. And in Clojure, you can use uh, Clojure. Is, it's a pragmatic language, so it's immutable by default. But if you need uh, mutability, you can. Yeah, you've got some concurrency primitives, and one of them it's an atom, and it's often used to store data. So uh, in this case, I've got order form uh, total, while I store uh, a total. Uh, for the order, and uh, I'll define here. I can define my uh, total sum uh, component, uh, and where I display the total, and I mark it as uh, uh, using React uh, Rams uh, React function that I want to keep uh, keep looking at this value. So whenever it changes, my component would update and. How do I make a change? Uh, I make a change again in, a, in my toggle class uh, function, uh, depending whether um, the component should be uh, whether the, uh, it should be active or not. I'll just increase or decrease price from the uh, total order. Uh, and another mixing that RAM provides is a cursor to mixing. It's similar to the approach taken by uh, OM proper. Uh, and it provides an interface uh, to subtrees inside an atom. Uh, so let's say that I want to store whole my whole application state uh, in a single in a single atom. So in this case, uh, I'm storing the uh, color for header uh, in my settings, and I've got a label component with that takes some uh, color and uh, text. And if I want to use uh, this component, I would pass it some text. And I would pass a cursor to certain place uh, in my global atom. So in this case, it's uh, app settings, headers, and color. So whenever there's a change to this particle place in my atom, the component will get updated. Uh, there are certain benefits of using this approach, uh, like in OM, where you've got one global state. It provides atomic swaps, and your application is uh, always in consistent state, going from one state to another through uh, transitions, manipulations. Uh, it's easy to implement uh, undo. It's just a matter of going to previous state, and uh, you can serialize your app. So imagine that your customer reports a bug uh, or that application crashed. Uh, if you've got a way to serialize uh, your application state and, and your customer can send it to you in your local machine, you can debug it and see what exactly happened uh, that caused uh, a crash to your uh, customer. Uh, but RAM is more flexible. On top of uh, mixing that it provides, you can create your own mixing, and it's just a matter of using uh, React by lifecycle methods like will mount, uh, should update, so on and so forth. So, if I wanted to create a, let's say, scrolling mixing that would scroll to a certain page on my page, uh, I'll just use uh, React lifecycle methods. And in this case, I'm uh, using dead mount method. Uh, first, I check whether I scrolled before or not. Uh, if I didn't, I call scroll function uh, that takes some argument and just saying that I've scrolled. Uh, 
you can create other mixins. For example, if you uh, use uh, Google Analytics and uh, quite often you have to provide different arguments, you can create a mixin that takes those arguments, you can plug it to your component and you've got free or, or at least CLS pain uh, with creating uh, components with Google Analytics. So it's quite easy to build uh, new mixins and you can mix them and match in your uh, application. So you can have a top level reactive component, a few local ones, static ones, maybe a cursed one, all depending on your needs. Uh, they are decoupled uh, as well. Uh, probably the most uh, known OM wrapper, uh, Closure, uh, ReactJS wrapper in ClojureScript is OM. Um, uh, it comes from the fact that it, uh, uh, that it was created by David Nolan, and he's one of the main developers behind ClojureScript. So a lot of people that come to ClojureScript and want to use uh, different wrappers in OM, they would uh, in ClojureScript, they would use uh, OM. Uh, I've mentioned some of the benefits of using one global state, uh, but there's sometimes it's not the most optimal solution. So I'll explore uh, examples where this model breaks, and I'll show you uh, what we can do to uh, improve this uh, model. So. In ARM, the root UI is given a root cursor and it passes uh, subtrees of cursors to its subcomponents. So I've, if I've got a list, uh, uh, I can just yeah, display it and uh, on the left hand side, yes, on the left hand side, uh, you can see uh, my data structure and how it maps to what I want to display. So it's uh, fairly simple and easy one-to-one uh, -one relation. Uh, but what if you've got UI with some uh, cross-cutting concerns? Let's say that you want to create a dashboard uh, and, you, and you want to uh, shrink or expand certain parts in your uh, dashboard. Plus, you want to save the presentation options in your general settings. With cursors, cursor would point to certain uh, certain place uh, in your Atom, and you can save information about a uh, certain uh, item from a list in a certain place in your Atom. But if you want to save it in general settings, then you start battling uh, on and this principle of using uh, cursors. Because the cursor-oriented architecture requires you to structure your app that matches a tree. Uh, a tr uh, actually, it's a UI tree, but quite often your data are not a tree. Uh, changing, uh, say that changing uh, text items is uh, quite easy, but what about uh, deleting an item? Uh, should it be easy? Well, it partially depends whether you think that the delete option, should it belong to an item or should belong to a list? If you think that it should belong to an item, you've got a problem because deleting an item requires list manipulation. And your list item is a child of a list. So it, you would have to create two-way data binding between your child component and your parent. So what are the solutions? Well, I would say that use RAM because it's more flexible. But if you really like uh, OM and you want to use it, uh, one solution would be to use OM Next, which is a new version of OM. But actually, it's a reboot. It was inspired by Facebook's Relay, Netflix, Falco, Cognitex, Titomic, uh, and also the experience of last few years. So if you want to display uh, date of per uh, purchases for some item, you wouldn't structure your data in this way, where you've got uh, some information about the purchase, and then you've got previous purchases, and you can see, but this data structure would be quite nice if you want to display it on a page. 
So if you want to save your data, you would use a structure more similar to this way, where you've got recent purchases and you just store ID of your recent purchase, and then you've got uh, another data structure uh, with information, with actual information about uh, purchases that you did. Uh, in Op.next, components de define a query to data that they need. So uh, those of who have seen Norbert's uh, talk, uh, this is part where I'll be talking about uh, ideas that he uh, talked. So probably, hopefully it will start ringing a bell. Uh, cursors help to navigate a tree while query can navigate a graph uh, and your data. So uh, I could, if I wanted to find date of previous purchases for some of my recent purchases, uh, I could quite easily define such a query. And it's not difficult to understand just by looking what what I want to get. And possibly I can get a uh, data structure like, like this that would be uh, really easy to uh, just display. Uh, in my UI. So how, go, how do we go from that structure like this that I want to keep in my uh, data store to something like this that I want to display in my uh, UI? With a bit of help from you, om.next can normalize uh, uh, the data from the one that you store into the one that you use. And how does, how does it do normalization. Uh, let's have a look at another example. We've got two lists, and uh, we can see that there's a bit of duplication between uh, both lists. Uh, so let's normalize this. And how can we normalize it? Well, uh, if we help OM and we say that we want to normalize using a product name, uh, we just define identity, and OM.next would scan our list, infer that it's the same name, so uh, it needs to be the same item. Plus, uh, when you define on the next component, you can define query as well. So here, uh, I want to get name, price, and discount. And just by using a, a bit of code, uh, I can get uh, such a list, where a normalized list, where in my list one and two, still I've got the same items that I had originally, but this, but this time just with uh, names. And then at the end, I've got information about products, all normalized without duplication. So in om.next, you can store the data the way you want, and you can convert it to the way that makes more sense to your UI. And whenever your UI changes, you just change the function that converts so you don't have to change. Uh, so you don't have to change uh, the data that you store. Uh, Om.next it's currently in the alpha stage, so it's a bit fluctuating, but it should be production ready uh, in a couple of months. But if you don't want to wait, there's another uh, solution. You could uh, use uh, DataScript and RAM. Uh, because good things come in purse, and uh, both of them they were, they were created by uh, Nikita Prokopov. Uh, so, DataScript is an Im uh, immutable in memory uh, database. It uses DataLog as a query engine. Uh, DataLog is a logical language. Some, it's a bit similar to uh, SQL, but also differs because it's a logical language. You can uh, you can infer uh, different things. Uh, it provides central uniform approach to managing uh, all uh, state. And DataScript uh, sits somewhere in between relational uh, schema and schemaless databases. So it's not as rigid uh, as uh, relational schema, but also more structured than a uh, schema that you would have uh, in, let's say, uh, MongoDB, so you're, you are normalizing uh, uh, the data that you store. Uh, and so if you want to define product name, 
uh, you could give it certain uh, attributes, so you could say that, uh, what its identity. Uh, well, you could specify what's the uh, value type. Uh, you could also say what's the cardinalities, uh, either one, many. Uh, you can create references between uh, different attributes. Uh, you can also add some optional uh, description uh, as well. So uh, a simple example of a uh, data log query where I want to find a uh, name, price, and a discount uh, would be like this. So oh yeah, you, oh yeah, you can see a okay, so, uh, so I want to find some product P uh, with certain attribute, uh, in this case name, uh, with, with a name. Because I'm using a uh, question mark, it works as a wildcard, so it would match uh, any, any name. And I want to, f for that same product, I want to find the price and also discount. And data log, it's a logical language, so uh, it will just yeah, scan our data and uh, figure out what's the, uh, what are the uh, entities uh, that, uh, that it needs to uh, return. And it's really similar to what we did uh, in om.next, where we wanted to find a uh, name price and a discount. But what if you want to find a specific item, not all the items that would match a query? So here you would uh, pass a name, and in this case, name would be really, would be specific name uh, that you want data log to find and return uh, information about this product by name. So how can you use it with RAM? Uh, like in om.next, you attach your query to your component. So when I define my product item, uh, it would take a database and uh, some name. Uh, I embed query that I want to use for finding, uh, finding product. And if I've got a product, I can render it with certain uh, details. So you can write uh, components that uh, depend on the return values of your queries. Uh, so the nice property of RAM and data script is that whenever your uh, data changes, your components would, would update. And you can treat a database uh, as a value. Okay, so uh, in summary, uh, React.js is really interesting. So if you haven't uh, used it, uh, give it a go. Uh, Closure script is also interesting. And I encourage you to uh, use uh, uh, or try Closure uh, script. Uh, and using uh, React.js in Closure script, uh, it's really nice. And you can create components and websites uh, fairly uh, quick. Uh, there's, there are a few uh, wrappers uh, that you can use in ClojureScript to uh, use uh, React. You can uh, explore. You can explore them. Uh, they've got different properties, uh, different trade-offs. Okay. Are there any questions? Any questions? Okay, then thank you, Conrad.